Hello everyone, Ace here, and I've noticed that a lot of people actually seemed quite interested in my previous historical video regarding common Anzac myths, and of course want to see more videos like it. And so today I've decided to go along a similar theme. So today let's have a look at a very obscure battle that occurred in 1918, one that appears to actually be somewhat connected to World War I, but took place in North America, specifically the Battle of Ambos Nogales. But to understand why and how this battle occurred, it's important to first look at the towns of Nogales themselves, as well as what were at the time relatively recent events in that area's history. First of all, the two towns of Nogales are actually located on the U.S.-Mexico border, the northern town being situated in Arizona, and the southern town being situated in the Mexican state of Sonora. And between them, as shown in this photo from 1899, was the International Street, with the only form of security in sight being the customs post in the middle of the street. Despite this lack of security at the time, however, tensions were nevertheless quite high. It's quite important to note that at this time, Mexico was undergoing a revolution, one that would see violence spill out across the border into the U.S. as well, including multiple examples in and around both of the towns of Nogales themselves. Incidents like these ultimately led to the U.S. deciding to launch a punitive expedition into Mexico specifically to hunt revolutionaries such as Pancho Villa. This was something that already nearly drove the U.S. and Mexico to war. Furthermore, by April of 1917, the United States had joined World War I against Germany, a decision which largely came about due to the Zimmerman Telegram, in which Germany offered a military alliance with Mexico should Mexico decide to declare war on the U.S., and also promising Mexico support in any claims they may have on the territories that they had lost to the U.S. during the Mexican-American War of the 1840s. Now, it should be noted that the Mexican president at the time, specifically Venustiano Carranza, had decided to remain neutral and not accept Germany's offer. However, the sheer existence of this telegram did not improve relations between the U.S. and Mexico. In addition, there are two other important factors to consider. First of all, due to the sheer instability of the Mexican state during this time period, the simple fact of the matter was that there were large areas of Mexico that the president of Mexico simply could not control. This even included elements of the military. This would ultimately see him overthrown in 1920 due to a revolt led by officers from the region of Sonora, where the Mexican town of Nogales is located. So needless to say, Carranza's actual authority over his country was quite limited, and should any of his generals decide to go rogue and do whatever they want, there was little he could actually do to stop them. And that brings me quite cleanly to the second point I need to make. That being that German spies were actually quite successful in infiltrating the Mexican government at this time, with a number of them even managing to become members of the inner circle of individuals such as Carranza himself and Pancho Villa. And the efforts of these German spies at the time did indeed include things like sabotage and attempts to further stir tensions between the U.S. and Mexico, in the hopes of driving them into war. And so by mid-August of 1918, the U.S. Intelligence Division had received some interesting reports from Nogales, Sonora including reports that military supplies were being stockpiled, that defensive positions were being dug, and that all of this was being overseen by men who appeared to be German, and who were specifically helping train the local soldiers. In addition, a letter which was claimed to be written by one of Pancho Villa's officers had arrived. This particular officer had apparently decided to warn the United States of German influence in the town of Nogales, Sonora, and specifically battle plans that were scheduled to launch on August of the 25th. Now, it isn't exactly clear if this letter was legitimate, but it did actually seem to be taken fairly seriously by the U.S. military. Now, I know this is a lot of history to get through before even discussing the battle, but as I've said, I do believe it's absolutely essential to understanding why the battle took place, which itself began on the 27th of August. Specifically, just after 4 p.m., when a Mexican citizen attempting to cross the border from U.S. to Mexico attempted to do so without going through basic inspection. The customs officer, suspecting the man of potentially smuggling contraband, ordered him to halt, and when this man refused to do so, drew his weapon and chased after him, followed by a U.S. soldier. Mexican border guards, upon seeing the spectacle, decided to open fire on the U.S. customs officer, but instead accidentally hit and killed the soldier. In response, the customs officer, as well as other nearby U.S. soldiers, returned fire. And thus, the battle had begun, with many civilians on both sides forming impromptu militias and firing on one another from across the border. 
However, this was not all, as the United States would receive reinforcements from the 10th Cavalry Division, which was a formation of Buffalo soldiers that had quite a fearsome reputation, having seen extensive action in the Indian Wars, the Spanish-American War, and the American-Filipino War. In fact, it was with this unit that the commander of the AEF, General John J. Pershing, had first served, and as such is also how he received the nickname of Blackjack. These reinforcements from the 10th Cavalry actually pushed into the town of Nogales, Sonara itself, taking the key high ground that the Mexican military had previously been entrenching. From here, these troops would hold their ground and fight until around 745, when a ceasefire was finally called. It has been reported that during this engagement, at least two U.S. officers and three enlisted men lost their lives as well as several militiamen. Losses on the Mexican side are not as well documented. However, it is known that among them was the mayor of the town of Nogales, Sonora, who was tragically cut down while trying to end the violence. Interestingly enough, however, it has also been reported that among the dead were at least two German agents, which would mean that this could technically be viewed as the only land battle from the First World War to take place on North America, and so ended the Battle of Ambos Nogales. Now, it should be said that the United States and Mexico never did actually go to war over this border incident, as a war was simply against the interests of both nations. However, this battle nevertheless still had long-lasting ramifications. In response to the battle, the U.S. government decided to build a fence along the International Street, the first permanent American fence on the U.S.-Mexico border, which would ultimately start a trend that we see to this day. I hope you found this video to be quite to your liking, and I do also of course look forward to doing more historically based videos as well in the future. But in any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care! A sound. <laughs>